Nor do I use these. I'll just give it a minute and then I'll start. Yeah. The recording has started, so when you're ready. Okay, good good evening everybody. Welcome to uh Spark Hill Ward Forum um for October. For those of you that don't know me, I'm Councillor Nikki Brennan, Councillor for Spark Hill Ward. What does that mean at the bottom? Um, just some housekeeping yeah. to start with. It's um good if people could turn their microphones off and turn their cameras off unless they're speaking. And just out of courtesy, we are recording the meeting, so it will be um put onto YouTube. So if people can't join the meeting, that they can um they can watch it at their leisure at a different time. So we have got quite a busy agenda. I am just gonna check and see if Public Health England are here. They're not. No, no, not yet, I'm afraid. The, the invite has been accepted, so um, perhaps if you want to move on to the next agenda item and see if they turn up a bit later. Um, so what I'll do is I'll swap four and two around. So if I bring in Kevin from Kia to start with, because I know Kevin is here already. I am. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Uh, so my name is Kevin Gibbon. I am the Keir Highway Steward for the East of Birmingham, which includes Spark Hill Ward. Um, start off with a couple of updates that you may be aware of. We've got some tree pruning that's going on on Stratford Road. Uh, just have to bear with me two seconds. I'm just flicking through different bits of information as we talk. Um, are there any resurfacing coming up? Uh, there is some resurfacing work that is going to be going on on Stony Lane at some stage. I haven't got the dates 100% confirmed at the moment, but that will be that will be done. Um, just go on to the next sheet. Routine maintenance works. We've got there's plenty of routine maintenance routine maintenance works that goes on throughout the year um i will send councillor i will send you the, the three month plan for routine maintenance routine maintenance after the after the meeting but dates are subject to move so just on the subject of routine maintenance we've got some routine carriage repairs on frederick road old grange road st john's road tenby road white green road uh, that will be commencing within the next couple of weeks and the other one is i think it's part of your ward um i'll try it. it's coyotes like road coyotes coyotes no no okay forget that one then but yeah so apart from that um if anybody's got any questions for me about how how we work what we do uh please please throw them away if anybody wants to report any any defects on the on the highway then i'll make a note of those and i'll get those looks at as well okay if i start by saying thank you for takia for coming out and doing such a good job on evelyn road on the pavements because they were really really unsafe and you've come out and done a fabulous I job a difficult work on that one so yeah that's appreciated thank you and um what i would say is something that as a councillor i get asked about all the time and i was wondering if it's something that kia could help with is parking issues where people put cones and bins on the highway outside their homes what could residents do about that right no there is no reserved parking on an un, un what's the word unrestricted road so if a road has got double yellow lines or anything like, like that yeah that's no parking we all know that but if somebody has put bins or cones outside their their property to reserve parking space that can just be moved um, by absolutely anybody. If we know which properties are doing it, now I know that sounds silly, but if the if the bin number, if somebody's put a number on their bin that says their house number, we can send enforcement letters and we can we can move it ourselves. We can remove cones off the street because they're unattended street furniture, uh, traffic management rather than not street furniture. We can just get those removed. We can come along and just pick them up, take them away. Um, we can do all that, but nobody has the right to reserve parking outside the house. 
um, on an un un unrestricted street. Even in even in the disabled bays that get painted. Oh no, the disabled markings that we put down are white. They are advisory only. They're courtesy markings. They hold no legal power. If somebody was to park on a white disabled marking, I'm going to cause uproar here. If somebody parks on a one of the white disabled markings, they will not, cannot get a ticket for doing so because they are purely advisory and purely there for consideration. That's all. And if somebody wanted to report that there was biddings and things on the highway, what would they do? Straightforward, straight through the Birmingham City Council website. So we've got some hands up and I'm just going to. Just before we go to questions, that will lead me on to one other thing. We seem to have a bit of an epidemic across the whole of Birmingham at the moment with regards to illegal drop crossings that are being put in. People are getting leaflets put through the door by various different road traders that are saying they'll, they'll do you a drop curb for your drive um, for a couple of hundred quid. Please, 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 I would implore residents, please don't go for those options because we will remove them if they haven't been done through the correct process. Um, and it's happening a lot in your area. It's happening a lot in in the other inner city areas, in the likes of Allen Rock and Washwood Heath and Small Heath. Residents have been taken advantage of by having these done and they will end up paying an awful lot more money because we will remove it and then send you the bill for the work that's been done. Because they have to go through Birmingham City Council and they have to be approved by the council before they can be installed. Thank you, Kevin. That's really helpful information. So I'm going to go to hands up and we've got a hand up from, I think it's Abdul Khan. <laughs> Uh, hi there. Hi, Kevin. Evening. Hi there. Yeah, I think you could sort of answer my question a bit. Um, I think with regards to the sort of bins and um, the cones that go out, etc. Um, as you can imagine, where people try to move, I know what you're saying. I know, I know. Obviously, they're illegal, and you can't actually put them there. It's actually uh, blocking the highway. Yeah. Uh, but in terms of someone actually moving and parking it, obviously, then you know you had incidents where it's gone confrontational and obviously issues happen so people don't want, obviously want to try and avoid that so you said you can contact the council which is great but if you know council being a big council and you know there's 101 emails there we need to know where people can actually send the right information to the right department and get it done so it would be good if, uh, if we can get that email up at some point Okay, uh, so page or, and obviously, or if Councillor can also get it out on the obviously on her Facebook page and let people know if there are issues, this is who directly you need to contact. Uh, rather than say, you know, ring the council or email the council, where do you go? You can go around in circles all day if you wanted to, <laughs> trying to find the right person. Yeah, if you go onto um, the Birmingham Council website and report an, report an issue as it is and it's it's on the highway section and if you report it as an obstruction you can do that anonymously that will come through to Kia and then we will get an inspector up there we'll have a look have a look at the situation if the if it's obvious who's been it is we will send that property a, a letter in the first instance following on from that we will refer it to fleet and waste who will who who can go more formal with regards to using wheelie bins as uh obstructions in the carriageway cones and things people putting crates out we can just take them away as soon as we got a location for it we can just send a crew up now just they'll just pick them up chuck them on the back of the van and we'll drive off we don't even have to notify for that and they're going to be increasing which is something so we've got another question in the chat which says can they put a cone on a dropped curb no they can on their property if they want to keep one on their their property, but no, not on a drop curb. A drop curb is access to the highway, and this is all part of the highway code. This isn't just something that um, we're making up as we go along. The the a drop curb is access to the highway. It's not access. Um, it's if if there is a vehicle on the drive, then that access should be left clear. 
if there is no prop, no vehicle on that drive, then unfortunately it can be parked in front of. It's just, a, it's more a courtesy thing. But that is, that that's pure highway code. That's not just, uh, that's not just a Birmingham Council thing. Okay, I'm going to do one last call for questions and then you're done, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> do we have any more questions at all? Yeah. I've got one more just following up what Kevin said, so I'm going to get if that's okay. Yeah, of course. Yeah, um, with the drop curve, just out of interest, I'm getting this sort of curiosity. You've got a drop curve, I know you can put the, I don't know what you call it, like a, a H sign outside on the white one. Yes. So has that got any power? So if, you, if I say an individual's got a drop curve, they put that outside their property, again, has that got any authority where people can't park it, or again, is that just for courtesy? No, it is just courtesy. It's white. Um, yeah. With it being white, it's just courtesy. It holds no legal power. Okay, thank you. This is one to know. Thank you. Not a problem. Okay, I don't think we have any more questions, Kevin. That's fine. So, thank you so much for attending. I was expecting to get savage tonight, so I thank you very much for that. <laughs> I'll stay on till the end. If anybody does have any further questions, just drop them in the chat and I'll, uh, I'll make a note of things. Thank you very much. No problem. Um, we will now move on to a presentation from Public Health England. So can I ask Damilola to start that presentation? on the chat, I think. Hello, you're right. Hello, good evening. Hi, good evening. my name is Damilola Agbata. I'm a service lead in the Public Health Division um, for Birmingham City Council. Thank you for having me this evening. No problem, you're very welcome. Thank you. So to, this evening I'm going to be presenting um, the Creating a Bolder and Healthier City the Birmingham Health and Wellbeing Board strategy. So um, this uh, health and wellbeing strategy has been put together and um, we're attending um, ward meetings just to have a public consultation on this strategy to present it to the ward so that you can have an opportunity to see it and ask some of the questions. Um, and we'll be able to feed those questions back and um, get answers for you um on any of the questions that you might have regarding this strategy oh i'm not sharing my screen just a minute i thought that was coming through can you all see my screen <clears throat> no not, not at the minute oh let's see i'll try again We can see it now. How is that now? All I can see is a dark screen. Oh, no, we can see it now. OK, that's good then. OK, so the Health and Wellbeing Board Strategy. The Birmingham Health and Wellbeing Board Strategy is a, is a, is a framework um, to facilitate collaboration in our city to help improve the health and well-being of the citizens of Birmingham. And it sets out our key ambitions and actions for the next eight years, that's 2022 to 2030. And it's been co-developed um, over the past three years with partners and citizens in the city. So the vision is to have um, a strategy that is citizen focused and informed by the citizens lived experiences and consciously focuses on reducing inequalities and promoting equality and inclusion. Um, we want it to be data driven and evidence informed and action um, would be research enabled so that we're doing what the evidence says works. 
to help improve the health and well-being of the citizens of Birmingham. So the strategy um, looks at certain areas and one is mitigating the legacy of COVID and also equality, diversity and inclusion. And it has five main things. So there's health, healthy and affordable food, mental wellness and balance, active at every age and every ability, and contributing to a green and sustainable future, protect and detect. So across the life course, um, this focuses on getting the best start in life, working well, aging well, and dying well. The five core themes run throughout the life course, like I've said, and the strategy contains two cross-cutting approaches present in all five core themes. So one, that's mitigating the legacy of COVID, and then secondly, that's equality, diversity, and inclusion. So we want to close the gap that runs through the entire scope of the work, focusing on reducing health inequalities. So our ambition is to engage with citizens and partners of the Health and Wellbeing Board on its ambition for health and wellbeing for Birmingham over the next eight years. And um, this involves certain objectives. One, to seek um, constructive and informative feedback on the strategy um, through gaining responses on Be Held and um, the word attending a number of word forums, um, engaging with health and social care um, committee, and then commissioning focus groups to hear from those who may not respond to the Be Heard survey. So there is a consultation link um, that we're also going to make available at the end of the presentation. And then also we want to focus on promotion on online platforms such as Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn and promotion at partnership meetings, forums and boards. Secondly, we want to build on the trust and relationships that's formed through our response and learning during the COVID pandemic and want to energize partners of the Health and Wellbeing Board during the consultation and the subsequent delivery of this strategy from April next year and onwards. So this is our timeline um, for the strategy. And we started the consultation on the 23rd of September and we hope to um, end that in December and have some of the findings, the consultation findings ready in the new year. And then publish the final strategy um, by April of 2022. So in terms of activities, we're looking at um, online questionnaires, engagement sessions, the word forums, um, commission focus groups, social media and promotion via meetings and forums and boards. So I seem to be having some problem with my teams. I'll try to get that back up again.
Can you see my screen, please? We can't at the moment. OK. Oh, we can now. OK, sorry about that. Yes, so I think I've covered this already. Yeah, so the framework has five core themes for action. Four of the core themes in the framework are aligned with existing sub forums. So he healthy and affordable food, that's creating a healthy food city. Mental wellness and balance, that's creating a mental, it's aligned with the creating a mentally healthy city. And then we have the active at every age and ability. So that's creating an active city, um, contributing to a green and sustainable future. And then protect and detect. So that's the health protection forum. So the health and well-being board supports a life course approach, and this is reflected in the framework aligning with the Birmingham and Solihull integrated care systems outcome framework. The five core themes run throughout the life course, and this is split into the um, groups as I've mentioned earlier. So the framework has incorporated the experience and response to the pandemic alongside ongoing commitments to equality, diversity and inclusion. And the framework contains two cross-cutting approaches present in all the five core themes and the life course strands. And these are mitigating the legacy of COVID, equality, diversity and inclusion. So the Birmingham um, Health and Wellbeing Board strategy um, is committed to reducing inequalities. The aim of the framework is to close the gap um, at pace and scale across the city, um, which health and wellbeing board sub forums will be tasked to demonstrate um, progress on throughout the action plan. So closing the gap aims to address health inequalities linked to poverty, marginalization and structural barriers and challenges. Now, there are five key areas of inequalities um, of focus, and they include inequalities based on deprivation, inequalities based on ethnic communities, inequalities based on wards, inequalities between inclusion groups, for example, the homeless um, population and sex workers, and finally, inequalities affecting disabled people. So the delivery of the strategy will explore these inequalities um, by, you know, dedicating specific resource and effort to address them and identify clear evidence of significant gaps for people with the intention of closing the gap and to improve the outcomes for the citizens of Birmingham. Um, on this slide we have indicators um, that, you know, overall present Birmingham as significantly worse than the England average. And we will measure the impact of the strategy over the next five to 10 years. And delivery groups will identify specific um, indicators that can be used in the short to medium term to track change and inform the delivery of the strategy. So um, there are a couple of examples here. Um, Infant mortality, you know, th this indicator is already showing Birmingham as um, doing significantly worse than the in England average and quite in a number of other indicators as well in life expectancy. Um, you know, Birmingham is doing significantly worse there as well. So the Birmingham Health and Wellbeing Board strategy um, is something that we want to hear everyone's views on and the draft strategy and the consultation can be found um, in the link here, which I'll post into the chat and would also make available. A copy of the presentation would also be made available 
um, through Kay. And we would like you to go to the Be Heard website to give us your feedback and think about how, um, you know, what you read in the document can inform your word um, plan. And you can also ask questions to the health and well-being um, board meetings if you wish as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I was just wondering, Kai, if we'd be able to send that presentation out to everybody on the mailing list, if that's OK. Yeah, that's not a problem. I can do that for you. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions on the strategy and um, the consultation at all? I've got no hands and I've got no questions except for traffic and Kia questions in the chat. So I think we will move on to our next item. But thank you, Dami Lola, for coming to present to us. Much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. So our next agenda item is a presentation from Spark Hill Business Forum. So I will pass over to Shamus now for his presentation. I think you're on mute. Um, yes, yes, I am. Hello, hi. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yep, yes, good. I can. All righty. Well, thank you very much for handing over Councillor Brennan. I appreciate that. Now, bear with me as I get some information up, and we'll we'll get going. Now, I don't know if you're able to see. Can't see the presentation at the moment. No, sorry, bear with me. I'm still trying to get it up. OK. OK, can you see anything at all on your side? I can just see you. Well, hello. <laughs> just trying to get this thing up. Um, click in share content. Browse my computer. Selecting the. Selecting the PowerPoint. But it's not. Uh, if you um. If you look at the top on the toolbar, you yep. can see leave in the red. Yep. You see leave. Next to leave. Yeah, press that's share content. I've I've clicked that one and it says PowerPoint Live underneath it says browse my computer. So I've tried to upload it via browse my computer. And then I can I can see the presentation on my side. And then when I double click it, nothing happens. Try so putting it up on window. Yeah. Okay. Ah, here we go. Well done. Much better. Can you guys see that now? No, I can just see an SM. Not at the moment, no. You're not using two screens, are you? No, I'm not, no. OK, because that normally happens. If it doesn't work, is it the presentation? It, no. I can see that. We have your, we have your presentation. Oh, I can see that. We have it. Yay, there we go. Oh, that's funny. I can't see it myself. <laughs> you guys can see it, but I can't. How weird. OK, well, I'll just I'll just I'll just try and fly through it. So. Can you all hear me still OK? Yes, we can still hear yeah. you. OK, lovely. So thank you. First of all, welcome. My name is Shamus. Good to meet you all. About four or five months ago, I was having a chat with Abdul Khan, who is very active among the street clean team. And we were talking about the fact that 
Spark Hill doesn't have what's called a bid. Now, for those not familiar with a bid, it, the acronym stands for Business Improvement District. We will we will come back to that. But one of my questions to him was simply, why don't we have anything in place? And we kind of put our heads together and decided that we'd do something. At that point, I was introduced to the local police who sat down with me. We had a meeting and they said, we, we're wanting to put together some kind of a business forum for the area anyway. So, you know, a lot of people were kind of thinking the same thing. So let's let's just start by keeping it simple and discussing the, the geographic area that we're talking about. So for those familiar with, with the area, really we're talking about the main Stratford Road. And on one side, you'd go as far as Walford Road where the Aldi is. And then on the other side, heading towards, if you like, Hall Green, you'd go to where the, the Mughley Azam Banqueting Hall is um, or where it just kind of forks off um, to Chef Lane, I think it is. So let's just uh, quickly get this out of the way. Who am I? Um, I've been accused of being a comedian many times, but I'm the chap on the right. And I've been in Spark Hill most of my life. It's, with... it's The presentation isn't moving along with you. Oh, how interesting. In that case, I'm not entirely sure. Do you Are you able to show it on your side? Councilor? Oh, it's Brown. done it now. Oh. So it's oh, yeah. Well, okay. I'll backtrack. I'll backtrack to this last slide. That was just <clears throat> covering the geographic area, Walford Road to Mughley Azam. Moving forward quickly, I appreciate that you know this is time restrictive. Um, I'm the one on the right. I've been in Spark Hill most of my life, give or take a number of years. Um, as far as representing the area is concerned, I kind of first had an office in Spark Hill Centre at the age of 15 and did some work on behalf of the Sparkbrook constituency, which was pretty cool because it sent me to Prince Charles's birthday party. Um, moving forward, I want to talk about a bid. I want to talk about the area. I want to talk about the work that we can do together because one, one thing that is clear, and I think everybody I've spoken to agrees, is that the area seems to have a lot of issues. Now, first of all, I want to be clear, these are not unique to Spark Hill or Sparkbrook. Every area in Birmingham has them. But the big six, and what you're looking at right now is a screenshot of the homepage of the Spark Hill Business Forum website. So for those who are curious and want to, want to look a little deeper into the website itself, that's www.sparkhillbusinessforum.com. But on the homepage, we've put the big six, the, you know, the bullet points in front of you are pretty clear in what we want to target. And I've spoken to many of the retail outlets up and down the Stratford Road. I've spoken to many of the, the shopkeepers and everybody is in agreement. There, there's certainly a need for be better parking facilities. That's crystal clear. My opinion is that we also need better digital visibility because the shops on the Stratford Road don't really have much digital visibility, which is really interesting when you consider that Spark Hill is the the retail independent capital of the UK. You know, it's it's a big claim. It's something like 90, 98% of the shops are run by independents. Um, the next one, of course, is reducing crime. Uh, everybody agrees that it needs to be tackled. The police, I think, are doing a great job in as much as with the resources they have. But we do need to help. And we'll, we'll talk about that. The next issue that everybody unanimously talked about was the the buildup of black bags, the fly tipping. And again, with that, we we can do our little bit, even if it's just reporting it on the Fix My Street app. You can notify the council. They will come and do the collections. We're going to talk about regenerating the area. That's a bigger goal and it will take a lot more time. But the, you know, the idea here is that the Stratford Road and in particular the shopkeepers along the Stratford Road if we can work on all of these areas, if we can tackle some of the crime, if we can make the parking better, if we can just generally make the area cleaner, then you're going to end up with more revenue, with more customers coming to the area. So that's, if you like, an introduction to the goal of the Spark Hill Business Forum. That's very much why we're having a forum. So we'll, we'll come back to that. But a quick note uh, to the supporters, because... This kind of initiative, no individual can do this alone. You need to have the right support of the right people 
in order to make an impact. So a big shout out, and I want to mention, of course, Birmingham City Council, hugely supportive. I want to mention the Streetwatch team, who I think do incredible work and just don't get enough credit for it. The mayor of the West Midlands' office have sent us a letter in support. So they are they are on board. You know, they are, they agree with what we're trying trying to do. The police themselves have been fantastic, both in terms of serving the community, but also in helping me to get this business forum off the ground in the first place. And then last but not least, Councillor Brennan, who we will talk about, um, I, I think is really, really supportive to the area. But in particular, we're grateful for the councillor's support of the forum. So let's let's just go back to bids. Now, as I said earlier, the acronym stands for Business Improvement District. In short, what happens is that a bunch of areas in Birmingham are successfully running bids. So what happens is the shops in the area get together, they put a little bit of money into a kitty. The, the money is controlled by the council. It's not controlled by one individual. The council holds the money and then the money is distributed for the betterment of the area. And so Hansworth and Soho Road bid, they deserve special mention because their bid, which started a number of years ago, but their bid is a model. It's really fantastic. And they won, I think it's called the Queen's Award, but it's the equivalent of the MBE for community programs. Um, fantastic. Kings Heath has a bid. Solly Hall has a fantastic bid. There's a really good website online. By all means, check it out. Acox Green has one. And then the bottom two on the slide are for city centre bids. And notably, there's not one for Spark Hill. Now, the difference a bid can make to an area is quite significant because Although I don't want to sort of stick my neck out too far, what I will say is if everybody puts a little bit into the kitty, then in terms of public funding that you can tap into, you can easily multiply that to the power of 10 and you can really make big impact on your area because it's a great way and it's a proven mechanism. So if you wanted an academic point of view, this is a, 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 a quote by the University of London. But just where the arrow is, bid areas have outperformed non-bid counterparts over the last four years. The amount of business and employment numbers grew at a higher rate or decreased at a lower rate in bid areas in comparison. So, I mean, just to summarize, the fact that Spark Hill didn't have anything in place already means we're at a disadvantage. So we wanted to tackle that. We also wanted to try to play the game intelligently the way some of the other areas are. So moving on swiftly to some of the work that we've done so far. Now, bear in mind, it's taken some time because this was, you know, it was an acorn and it came out of nowhere. Birmingham Council have been absolutely superb. We've had monthly meetings with the council and they've given me a lot of guidance in terms of how this thing should be structured, how other areas are doing it, you know, do's and don'ts, where to get success. We're partnering certainly with our Streetwatch team who are quite literally part partners on this project. Um, our local councillor, Councillor Brennan, has been really supportive of us getting this off the ground. I'm, I'm not used to a world where everything takes such a long time. Working in the private sector, things happen very quickly. So it's taken me some adapting to understand that Things here take months rather than days. Um, we set up a, a WhatsApp group, a simple WhatsApp group for the retailers on the Stratford Road, just so that we can simplify communications and have everybody talking. This is important to share information, whether it's, you know, faces or issues of crime or just just things that you may want to notify other retailers of. Um, so that's that's taking shape. It's it's going along nicely The the car parking issue, I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but on Nansen Road, there's 26 new slots. That's 26 car parking slots, which weren't there before. The main Stratford Road now is chaotic. Most times of the day when it's busy, it's chaotic. So there's there's 26 new slots. We're just working with the council to try and open that up so that it becomes a two-way lane, so it's easy access in and out. Fly tipping already has, you know, or at least let me... 
say that the reporting of fly tipping has improved significantly because you know people are slowly starting to use the fix my street app uh, which which it just simplifies communications to and with the council we've also had a bit of local media coverage uh, i think it was the birmingham live who covered the the superb work of the street clean team so that's that's just what we've been doing over the last if you like three four months of just getting this thing off the ground but you know the the issues we face every area has them whether it's graffiti whether it's the build up of the black bags whether it's the anti social parking we we have the same issues that everyone else has so i'm delighted now i'm delighted now to bring us onto the issue of our first big win as a business forum so i'll, I'll just go through these very quickly because i you know i, I realize that it, it's probably not the sexiest of subjects but the area needs to look clean it needs to look welcoming if we're going to get people back to the high street to do their their shopping so we've been in talks with the council and there's been a actually it's a european initiative called the welcome back fund and uh, a few weeks ago well, i said a few weeks ago it was probably like 12 weeks ago now three months ago but we put in for some funding and we recently learned that we've been announced that we've won some funding for the area it's it's designated for our patch of of stratford road the the areas i discussed earlier but moving on to what we're going to do now the way this works is the money is held by the council they then employ the uh, contractors they will come to the area and do the actual work so the street clean and i went up and down and had a look at the the whole of the patch all of the railings were chipped and looking really tired. So hopefully they're all going to get a fresh coat of paint. It'll start to look nice again. A lot of the issues with the broken planters, we were surprised to learn that they weren't localized issues. They weren't a Birmingham Council issue. Those planters out by the park, some of which are broken and tired looking, they're, they're actually a legacy from a national initiative. So we're going to have a look at those. If they can be replaced, we will. If they can not we'll just remove them um number three is a big one the whole of the area is going to have a deep clean now to my knowledge it's never happened before but if you have a shop on the main stratford road that area is going to have a deep clean we're going to have a graffiti clean all of the places where people have been doing graffiti and, and i stress public places not your private shop front this is public spaces but it will all be cleaned up the council have penciled this work in for March. Um, with regards to some of the parking problems, and what I'm referring to here is when cars on Stratford Road quite literally sit up on the pavement and, and just gobble up space that should be space where people are walking, we're going to look at putting some bollards into that into the area to help ease that burden. But um, just to clarify, half of the money here is coming from the European Welcome Back Fund. The other half of the money is very generously going to be found by Councillor Brennan's budget for minor highway repairs. So this is an important win for the area because this is a lot of work. It's going to be done. It won't all be done immediately. I know some of the work has been penciled in for March or, or February, but the point is that we're taking baby steps, but we're, we're starting to, to get significant wins. And the reason this is so important is as far as I'm concerned, it's just a beginning. If we look at the benefit of the area having a bid, there are things that we can do for this area to the benefit of every shop and retailer on the Stratford Road. So some of the other areas, some of the other bid areas, they have uniformed ambassadors patrolling the area seven days a week, just helping, you know, to report crime, that kind of thing. They certainly... One of the things that should be easy for us to do is to help the council with more frequent cleaning um, collections of the big, you know, the black bags and the rubbish bags. We can prevent the buildup to a degree if we have more frequent collections of the black bags. I've already referred to digital visibility for the shops. Right now, our area has nothing, and it's a shame for the UK's capital of independent retailing. But um, I think digital visibility, we, we really should get some powerful social media going. 
for our retailers on the Stratford Road to help them. Parking problems are being tackled. They're being worked on. These are big, difficult challenges. They're not simple, but we're working on them. And then it wouldn't be correct not to mention antisocial behavior, even the begging outside certain shops. These issues are difficult issues, but they can be addressed if the retailers come together and support a bid for Spark Hill. Now, moving on, what we will intend to do is call a meeting. We will invite local retailers with the intention of discussing how they want to proceed. And hopefully we could take this forward and, and start to form what will become a bid eventually. They take time. But if the retailers come together, if the area comes together, if the um, stakeholders I referred to earlier, the partners, if they come together, then we could successfully turn this area around and improve upon it. And I think it's around the corner. And, and the fact that we've already won some money to improve and clean up some parts of the area is proof that this could work very well. So I will kind of leave it at that as far as the presentation goes. And I don't know if I have time to invite questions, but if I do, uh, Councillor Brennan, you can let me know. You do have time for questions. Um, Kevin has his hand up from Kia. Yeah, hi, Sean. That was great. Thank. That was <laughs> that was really good. Um, Thank you, Kevin. I've spent a lot of time working with Acrox Green Bid, Retail Bid, um, West Side Bid, Kings Heath Bid. They're all part of my my remit. That's really um, good. what I would say is if if I could ask Councillor Brennan to pass on my contact details to you outside of this meeting. Yeah, I'd really appreciate it. Um, it would be great to come down, have a chat with you, go for a little walk around. There is there is an awful lot of things that I can assist you with with regards to work within the area. Um, I can let you know what we can do to assist and how to really, really start making a difference. That would be fantastic. We would really welcome the support because one of the one of the difficulties right now, I, I feel, is that there's a core handful of us who kind of know what a bid is and understand how it could help the area. Yeah. And I feel that if more people understood the benefits of having a bid, the area would embrace it a bit more. And one of the most important parts of that is having somebody else who can say, well, look, here's what the other areas get. Yeah. And we could do the same. Um, you know, we have a, a somewhat skeptical audience and our job's to win them over. So I, I welcome your support. Thank you. Kevin. Absolutely. Yeah. Councillor, if you wouldn't mind passing on my contact details to Seamus and then just drop me a line and then uh, we'll get together. I'll, I'll arrange a meeting. We'll get together yeah. and we'll go for a walk around, have a chat, go and see some of the businesses. Yeah. That's brilliant. Thank you. There's My pleasure. that meeting at the start of November as well at the council house, which we could invite you to. Um, but I'll pass the details on to you after this meeting. Um, Thank you so much. Do we have any other questions or comments? Um, there is a question that says, do you mind if I post a snip of the slides in the Spark Hill WhatsApp group? No, not at all. You're welcome to. <laughs> um, nobody else has any questions or comments. Yeah, if you can take a note of whose the question that was, and I'll liaise with them directly, but eventually I was going to put it up, or at least parts of it, onto the WhatsApp group anyway. <laughs> Thanks, Shamas. It's oh. me, Jamil. Jamil, thank you for that question. Hope you're well. I am. Thank you. Really, really good presentation there, Shamus. That was that was really well presented. Thank you so much. Would you be happy for those slides to be sent out to the uh, mailing list? Yeah. What I'll do, if you don't mind, is I'll, I'll convert them into PDF first, just so that um, you know they they can't then be altered, um, and I can't be accused of putting extra zeros in the funding that you've promised us. Um, Perfect. If you just send it over to me, uh, I'll thank, get it to Ty. Thank you. Thank you so much. And and on a personal note, we we on behalf of the forum, thank you very much for your support. It's really important to us. Oh no problem. It will be good to invite you back in a couple of months to do another update. Sure. Um, to let everybody know what's happening next. Yeah, uh, happy to. So I'm just going to move on to the next item, which is an update from the local police. But I am not sure if Sarge is in the meeting or anybody is in the meeting from the police. 
It doesn't look like it. Councillor Brennan, I can't see anybody. OK, well, he did message me before to say if he had trouble joining, then I could um, read his update out for him. But I've just got it. I've just emailed it across to my phone just so it's easier for me to read. If it, people are happy for me to read out the um, update and then we could probably pass questions over to the police um, outside of this meeting if any if residents had questions. So what have we got from them? It's very small. Um, so officers have created a good working relationship with local housing companies who manage a large number of HMOs who will now assist officers with inquiries and tackling antisocial behaviour issues, which sometimes cause concern for local residents. Staff at the Zinnia Centre are working with officers and make us aware of any offences, and this in turn can help us identify and safeguard potential vulnerable members of the community. Great partnership work is ongoing with Mosley School, um, as officers have been liaising with Mosley School. There are raised concerns that more and more students are being sold vapes illegally. Officers are now working with the school and young persons involved and will and will are and are working on joint work with trading standards, cadets and the school to tackle this issue. Work will continue with Mosley Secondary School. So far, input from PCSOs and PCs have been well received and the school would like to have more of this. So officers will arrange days to attend and give input and work with pupils and staff. Input will focus around under 25 violence, county lines, prevention, and also input around forced marriage within external partner agencies will be given. This so far has led to identification of vulnerable children and some great prevention and intervention work has been done with pupils on an individual basis and this is ongoing. Officers are working with the cadets and are attending regularly at local schools, helping to build trust and confidence between police and young people, as well as offer advice and guidance. Hotels are visited by officers to establish good working relationships by officers attending the location on a number of occasions. The focus of this partnership work is child sexual exploitation and county lines. Staff at the locations are very pro-police. County lines, child sexual exploitation was explained and discussed with staff at the locations. Toilets are checked on a regular basis at the locations and staff confirm that they have not found any evidence of any drug, any form of drug activity for a long time now, which is great. Partnership work with local rehab programmes is ongoing and forward facing after a very productive meeting around working together on some projects in the community. During the meeting it was agreed we will work together jointly to provide some pathways outreach work where necessary. We have appointed a new HMO for Springfield Neighbourhood Team. I think that's Special Officer for Springfield Neighbourhood Team. Further partnership work with local primary schools is planned to continue. Greet, Arden and Springfield School will be having input from both PCs and PCSOs around stranger danger, intervention and prevention, age appropriate county lines inputs. Officers have arranged with schools to offer a more to also offer more support for vulnerable children and to build relations between local schools and police so children feel safe to come and speak to us. This has also included speaking with school safeguarding lead who has highlighted particularly vulnerable children who may require further safeguarding support. Officers have arranged with schools to run future courses in order to support vulnerable children at school, including safe online, road safety, stranger danger, fireworks, etc. 
people who help us topic careers events individual pu pupil needs mentoring behavior working with parents any safeguarding concerns around gangs etc working with school council on projects such as anti-fly tipping campaigns safer parking campaigns any other pshe or improvement priorities street watch pcso's are regularly working with local street watch groups PCSOs will patrol the area with street watch, looking for hot spots where there may be antisocial behaviour issues, reported drug problems and areas where there are often vulnerable adults found. Connecting the members of the community through the Sparkbrook Business Forum and street watch teams, establishing further multi-agency partnerships with local groups and organisations. PCSO patrols near to the local primary schools as and when commitments permit and connect with parents and children when leaving primary school to discuss a vary of topics led by them. Everything from keeping safe, road safety, home behaviour and ongoing joint work with Birmingham and Solihull Women's Aid will continue. Springfield has an increase in the number of concerns regarding the number of vulnerable people in Spark Hill Park and surrounding area Officers are engaging with vulnerable people found in hotspot areas and working with partner agencies and are regularly conducting foot patrols in hotspot areas with external agencies. Women's Aid have and will join officers on operation where between us we will get information on vulnerable people and ensure appropriate safeguarding measures are put in place. Collaborative working would seem to achieve better results in the long term. So that is the update I have had from the police. Um, if there's any questions anyone would like me to ask the sergeant, um, please pop them in the chat and I can pass them over. Or if anybody has any comments to make, please raise your hand or speak now. OK. We will move on to our last agenda item, which is an update from me, the local councillor. And um, the one thing I have to update everybody on um, at this meeting would be that we have had the mobile, mobile recycling crew come to, to the ward um, on Monday um, down, at, uh, down on Springfield Road. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't attend as I was actually in, in, in A&E at the time, so I'd hurt myself quite badly. Um, so I couldn't go down and see what it was like and how many people came to engage. But um, we're very fortunate to have it come in again on the 5th of November, which will be on Shell Green Lane. Um, I'm happy to make sure we get um, the details of that sent out to our mailing group on here. And it will be there on the 5th of November from 7am to 12 noon. Um, and I can send out a list of what they will accept and what they won't accept. But they've been great in other areas and they've correct, co collected lots of waste. So does anybody else have any updates that they would like to give the ward forum? OK, Abdul, do you want to come in? Yeah, uh, just one point really. I think you, you, I don't know, you're probably aware of it, but obviously there's a lot of uh, uh, people in the community talking about the closure of the Lloyds Bank on Stratford Road. Uh, so that's been announced, obviously, uh, officially by them. Um, obviously, the last bank really on the Stratford Road, uh, and there's no other high street banks there in terms of uh, their presence. Um, obviously, people are concerned. Uh, on several sort of areas. One, obviously, going back to Shemus's uh, presentation, obviously we've got a lot of businesses there, so a lot of them are cash intensive, so they'll be putting in, going in, using the bank and using their facilities. Obviously, elderly who may not be IT savvy and will have online accounts, so obviously getting access to their funds and stuff uh, and maybe unable to travel into other areas where banks are, i.e. Ecop Green or King's E. Um, I don't know, is there, has any approach been made to Lloyds to see why they're actually closing that down? Because from what I can see and what people say, it's a very busy branch. There's normally queues outside the door. Uh, and that's 
before COVID as well. So, you know, it's a very busy brand. So in terms of the reason for closure, maybe if representation can be made by the councillors to find out, uh, obviously to see what their thoughts are on it. Um, because like I said, that's the sort of last high street bank uh, left in a very busy independent shopping area. I'm happy to write to them, but it probably would be best coming from the MP. Um, as he would have more of an influence over things like that and be able to get in contact with people at the bank. So I'm happy to write to them um, I'm, and I'm also happy to write to the MP and ask if he can get in touch as well. And yeah, I'm maybe a jo uh, sort of joint response. Yeah. Yeah, no, well, uh, obviously the residents are aware of it via the social media and obviously, uh, obviously I'll urge them to write as well. But yeah, maybe a joint approach from yourself and the local MP would be good. Yeah, I'll I'll get in touch with him. Um, interestingly, though, they didn't contact me to say that they were closing. When the TSB closed, they wrote me a letter with all the um, reassurances and the fact that you could still use the post office. But Lloyd's have not contacted me at all. But yeah, I will get in touch with them and I will get in touch with the MP. I'll put it as one of my actions for the week. Jamil, do you want to come Thank in? Thank you. Actually, you already answered my question because I was going to say, uh, can we get... Tire Ali to do something about this, please. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll and with the TSB, I mean, say like um, Abdul said, TSB was the same because uh, I banked with both, and I remember I had to wait at least half an hour most times, especially during lunch, or probably more sometimes, actually 45 minutes just to uh, get served, and so it's definitely not a footfall. Yeah, it'll be. It, I, I'm not sure of the reasons why they closed, but I know that the whole city, the whole country, has lost lots of. Uh, Banks. Yeah, I think it's, it's like like most of the private company they're using COVID as an excuse to restructure the business. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'll make sure I write to them and I'll make sure I get in touch with Tahir as well. Do we have any other questions? Okay. I am going to close the meeting now then and I will look to hold another ward forum in December. So thank you all for your time this evening and thank you to everybody that's come to present. It's been a great meeting. Thank so you. You're, you're all free to leave now. All right, thanks for watching.